Hey guys, it's Tim McCamus. We're back at the shop today. We're in the showroom. Uh, we're going to continue on with our uh, shock instructional videos. So, uh, previous video, we kind of gave you a little rundown on some of the basics, and uh, we're going to start getting into a few more advanced settings here. So, um, I've got Chris Bell with me here from Kinetic Engineering, and he's the master shock technician. So, I'm going to let him talk to you a little bit about this stuff. Um, so, all of these, uh, all the new style shocks, or all the, the innovation in shocks, um, are different than from the old conies where they're going to have um, pressure on the other side of the oil. They're on the other side of the valve. So they're going to they're going to have instead of just having oil sitting in the reservoir that can cavitate, they're actually going to have nitrogen in there to help keep that oil um, from getting air in. Correct. It, right. Correct. Okay. So so you'll see that, that these shocks they they have and there's different variations of these. Some some they have. Uh, a piggyback cylinder on them. Some have a remote canister. They'll have a, a actual, uh, some of the uh, older uh, Penske's have a remote canister where they actually have a hose and a little canister that would mount on the chassis. Um, this little straighter valve here, you can take this cap off and this is where you're going to put the uh, nitrogen pressure in there. So I'm going to ask, I just have a few questions. So th this is what we use to fill this. So we have a little canister here that, that's going to hold nitrogen. It's got a little regulator on it, pressure gauge, and then just a little Chuck, air chuck here that we're going to pop on there to install the air. So, first off, let's talk about the the reason for having the nitrogen in there. Okay, the on a, an older style shock like like say the Coney that we looked at in, in the previous video, it's not totally full of fluid. There's an inner tube and an outer tube. This is a monotube shock, so uh, this outer body just has a bore inside that the piston runs up and down on. A non, a, a twin tube shock or, or like that Coney style that's non-pressurized, it's not 100% full of fluid. That's why it's critical to mount those with the body down. So it's fluid. If you mount it like this, the piston will end up out of the oil. Right. So on a pressurized shock, um, there's a separator piston. So there will be a piston in here that seals off a nitrogen chamber from the oil. And what happens is when, when the shock compresses, it pushes the piston down. It, it tries to compress the nitrogen, pushes the piston down. When it extends to keep it from pulling out of oil and cavitating, the nitrogen pressure forces the oil back to keep the void full. Uh, it, a really simple, really basic analogy is if you took a, a, a wet, really wet bucket of sand and you stuck your fist down and you pulled it out, there's a hole behind your hand. It fills that hole. It keeps oil, it keeps it 100% contained in oil at all times. The pressure uh, is critical. You need to check that. You need to keep an eye on it. Um, we'll show filling it and then how to check the pressure uh, here in just a second. So one question I have is, and you can you can imagine that that he just said you need to check the pressure because we get this all the time. I, I'll be at the track and the car will be acting strange, and I'll be like, "When's the last time you checked the canister pressure on the shocks?" And they're like, well, "What are you talking about?" Well, if you can imagine. This, there's not a lot of room in here. This, this whole thing, this has a lot of mechanical parts. It has oil, it has a piston, and it has nitrogen. So there's a very small reservoir for that to be in. So you've got an O-ring seal and you've got a little Schrader valve here. and You've got areas that the slightest leak can just, just ruin the, the air. I mean, it can pull it all out of there. So it, it's imperative that you check it. And um, we like to, I, I tell all my customers to check it every morning before the, the like start of the day, the routine, just check the canister pressure to make sure because overnight it could leak off and then that shock is not going to act right. Absolutely. It will cavitate. Uh, the compression will seem soft. As this pressure increases, um, typically in, in these it's more, but in the typical external canister style shock, if we up that pressure by 50 pounds, it changes the spring rate in the car by 15 pounds. Sure. So, so, so 50 yeah, equals 15. You, more pressure is going to basically it, it, it keep keeps the shaft that forced up. Out. It doesn't want it, it mm -hmm. doesn't want it to compress, so it thinks it has a heavier spring on it. Um, the problem with that is, if somebody will, will run the car, we typically run our stuff at seventy five psi. Uh, somebody will have twenty five psi in it. They've not checked it, uh, it, but the car was had some issues. Then they put seventy five back in it. Now the ride height's an eighth of an inch high. Sure. And and then they're like, hey, what happened to my ride height? Why is this thing doing something stupid? Well, because. You set it at 25, the ride height with it at 25, and now you jack that into it. You put spring rate into it. So, so that's, it, it has multiple purposes. Uh, we won't get into it in this video, but, but sometimes we'll even use that to manipulate spring rates. Sure. Uh, we can do that in a later in a tuning, more of a tuning video. So why, um, 
why nitrogen and in, in not just compressed air out of the air compressor in your, in and your trailer? It, nitrogen is dry. Nitrogen does not have uh, moisture in it. Uh, your shop air will have moisture in it. So as, as temperature increases, um, the air, the nitrogen will still compress the same. If there's a percentage of moisture in air, then it will not compress the same because uh, the, the, the moisture will displace volume. So we try to use, you know, a, a really dry, a clean air. Nitrogen's the best option. Same reason that people use it in their tires in their car. The tire gets 150 degrees, it picks up three PSI because of moisture. With nitrogen, it picks up zero PSI. Okay, so, and this is something that, that, that comes up that I think would be helpful. So let's say I'm at the track, um, I check my pressure, and um, it's down. I go and grab my cylinder, it's empty. Yep. Is, can I use compressed air to get by for the weekend? You could top it off with compressed air because it's not a complete volume. You're not pumping. And most of us have a drying type system, either you know just a coalescent type filter or something right. to, to keep it from just pumping water in there. So, so it would be yeah, better than just... not doing anything. I mean, letting it, if, so Correct. if I come back and this thing is down at 25 PSI and my nitrogen bottle's empty and nobody around me has any that I can use, um, you, I can hit this with zap compressed it, zap air. Zap it with some shop air. Yep. Bleed it back down to your number. Then when you get home, what I suggest everybody doing, if they've done that, is take the Schrader out. So just that, that Schrader comes out with just the same thing you take yep. the Schrader out of your slicks. Mm -hmm. Take the Schrader out, pump some nitrogen into it, and then just take that off. Let it blow back out. And right. it'll blow anything in there that's out of it. Basically, like, purges it. Yep. Put the Schrader back in, pump it up with nitrogen. Okay. So if I'm at the track and I'm in a bind, I can use compressed air. Just uh, when I get back to the shop, I want to drain that out of there and replace it with nitrogen and get that uh, back intact. And, and so that is the reason that um, I can mount this shock either way, and it doesn't matter. It just So you see these on cars, uh, our standard, we kind of mount them like this because it's the old style way. But you can mount this shock this way. You just have to remember which adjustment is compression right, and, right. and extension because so your extension is always on this small end. So don't flip it over and get confused. But um, because of the nitrogen pressure in here, that's why it's, we can do that. It's non-directional specific. Mm -hmm. You know, we have dragster guys that lay them down. Yep. Um, we have some rotary steels where they're they're transverse mounted like this. Mm -hmm. You know, on a on a cantilever type deal. So it does as long as it's a pressurized shock, it doesn't care its direction because it is totally full of fluid. The piston will never come out of fluid. Okay. Okay, so I've got this shock that's on my car, I've got this uh, nitrogen fill kit, and uh, I'm going to top it off. And one of the things that we, uh, that we use is this little uh, shuttle gauge here. It's, it's really nice. This is kind of a nice little um, piece here because it, it's got a lot of features. So it, um, I, can, I can swivel this in any direction. So however I put it on the car, I can swivel this all around. So this end is going to go on the shock, and I can put this on there. I'm going to turn this knob and seat that. There's a little O-ring in there that I'm going to seat. And so when I, that's going to give me a pressure reading of what's in there. And then to add, I can use this to add to it and pump that up. And then right here on the bottom is a little bleed button. So if I pump it up, and let's say I want to be 75, I'm going to pump it up to like, it's going to go to 90. I mean, it just takes a little squirt to get it up there. And then you can just tap this and bleed that off and get down to your number. And I always like to go just a, a little bit above my number because I'm going to lose just a hair when I take this off. Yeah. I mean, even though it works really good, when you unscrew this, you'll hear just a little out of there and you'll lose just a, a slight amount. I, I typically overshoot by five pounds. Yeah, that, that's what because I do. So, so at 75, you want to be at 80. You'll be at 80. When you take it off, if you stick it right back on there, it'll be 76 pounds. Yep. Uh, you know, it'll be 76 on um, on a remote canister or an external canister shock. This would be exactly 75. Right. It'll lose four to five pounds. Uh, you're not always super quick about getting it off. It does just lose a small volume, and it's just the volume that's actually from there to the inside of the sure. The, basically, the volume inside the Schrader. Yeah, this is, uh, but... this comes with a, a nice little uh, grab that there. This this comes with a nice little uh, carrying case here, and I uh, suggest we keep it in there because uh, this is obviously a, a, a nice little gauge, and you don't want to beat it up. Um, because this this needs to be accurate. So this is the way this comes in this little kit like this, and you can throw it in your toolbox, and then. This just flips around and goes in there like that and then you zip her up. So this is a nice little um, gauge. You can find it on our website and it works really, really good. And uh, you, you'll always have it in your toolbox and, and it's, uh, it, it never fails. And so as you're under the car, you can spin this thing around and get turn the gauge around and get it exactly where you can see it. So um, 
you guys got any questions, give us a call, but we're going to uh, close this out on our uh, nitrogen settings. So thanks for watching.